Hey guys, I have here with me today the Australian Brown Tree Snake. This one particularly is the Eastern Brown Tree Snake. And we're going to be talking about... <laughs> we're going to be talking about whether these guys make good pets or not. So stick around. So first of all, we're going to talk about where they're from. Uh, as the name suggests, this particular one's an Eastern Brown Tree Snake. So it's from Eastern Australia. But they're also found in Northern Australia as well as the coastal northern areas of Australia. They're pretty widespread. They've also been found in uh, Papua New Guinea and Indonesia. They're out of that family called cat's eye snakes, which they're the ones found in Indonesia. They're more, more or less called cat's eye snakes there, but they're out of the same family as these guys. So brown tree snakes aren't a python, like majority of the snakes you see in the hobby, at least in Australia, are pythons. These guys are a colubrid. Now, these guys are mildly venomous. That's one of the main things that differences them from pythons. They do have fangs and venom. It is a mild venom. It's not really medically significant though. As far as I know, a bite from these guys, if envenomated, there's some localized swelling and aching, but nothing overly significant that requires immediate medical attention. However, if you are one of those people that are allergic to lots of different things, you could have a bad reaction. It, it kind of just depends on how your body reacts to the venom, but no one has really had any serious bites from these guys. Now you might be wondering why am I holding this thing if it's venomous, even if it's mildly venomous? Well truth be told these are a pretty low risk venomous snake, as far as venomous snakes go, because not only is their venom extremely mild, their delivery system for their venom isn't that great. These are a rear fanged snake, so the fangs are located at the back of their mouth, so in order for them to in order for this little fella to get his fangs into my flesh and give me a dose of venom, biting me isn't enough. If he just tags me, more or less nothing's going to happen. He has to actually grab on and chew and work those fangs into my skin before venom can get anywhere near me. So their delivery system for the venom isn't that great. The odds of a bite are slim to none unless I let him chew on my finger. That, and these guys are more or less to, more likely to run away rather than stand and fight, so they're not overly a strikey sort of snake. Saying that, he's had a few strikes at me, but generally he's pretty good, and if you can read snake body language, they're not really difficult to handle. So one thing you may notice about these guys, they have these massive eyes. And this particular one's only a baby. They get a fair bit bigger, so these guys do grow between three and four foot long, they have been seen bigger, some have been seen up to 8 foot, but on average 3 to 4 foot is kind of the norm for these. They are a arboreal species of snake, so setting these guys up in an enclosure you will need lots of climbing space with lots and lots of branches for them. Um, they're very thin, whippy and fast moving, so lots of spindly thin branches will do great for these guys. Now you may also notice this one as well as any other brown tree snake that you see will have massive eyes compared to the size of their head. And you might think, well this guy's only a baby so that's why he's got big eyes because a lot of hatchling snakes do have pretty big eyes and then they kind of just grow into their eyes as they mature. Um, he will keep those big eyes for his whole life. He's always going to have massive eyes. And on top of that being extremely cute and giving them a bit of a personality when they look at you, um, the reason for that is these are a strictly nocturnal hunter. So they have big eyes because they have really good night vision. And you might think, well, hey, most pythons are nocturnal hunters. How come their eyes aren't as massive as these in comparison? True, but pythons also have heat sensing pits. At least most of the nocturnal ones do. Like carpet pythons all have heat sensing pits, for example. So they don't need to have as great of night vision because they got heat sensing pits to also help them hunt for their prey. These guys don't have heat sensing pits. So they need to compensate by having better vision. Now one thing you will notice after just kind of handling one of these for a little while, after you've been handling pythons for a while, is they're so different from pythons in every single way. So down to their vision is so much more acute and in tuned to detecting movement. They're very responsive, they'll turn and flick their head around and look at you very quickly, where pythons don't really do that. Um, they're much faster and whippier, they can kind of take off quite quickly when they want to and they're just lightweight compared to a python. <laughs> I've also noticed that for I've also noticed that for an arboreal snake, compared to an arboreal python, say like a jungle carpet or something, they don't climb in the same way. 
a jungle carpet when you're holding it, it wraps around you and it hangs on quite well and you can feel it hanging onto you. These guys, even though they're arboreal, I feel like I'm constantly gonna drop it by accident because it's kind of just draped over my hand. It's not actually wrapping around and hanging on like an arboreal python. It kind of just uses its balance alone, not so much its wrapping and hanging on sort of strength, I guess. Where a python will just wrap and hang on and it'll rely purely on its own body to hang onto the branches. These guys just balance on top of the branches and kind of go through them rather than coiling around them like a python. So it kind of feels like I'm going to drop him even though he's perfectly fine, he's got really good balance, I just got to trust in his balance I guess. Saying that, I am sitting on the ground because I, if by chance he does drop, he hasn't got far to fall. It's just going to be into my lap. These guys will actually, I wouldn't call it jumping, but they'll kind of, if they're climbing in a tree and there's a gap they need to cross that they can't stretch across, and it's a bit lower than where they're sitting, they'll kind of fling themselves onto the next tree. They will actually jump trees. They don't so much do it when they're bigger, but when they're little and lightweight like this guy, I've noticed this guy will actually just kind of fling himself to the off my hand, like that, onto my other hand. <laughs> he literally just did it as I said it. That's how good their vision is and their depth perception. They'll see another branch, fling themselves onto it, and actually free fall onto this other branch. It's really, really cool, but it makes handling them kind of nerve-wracking when you're used to handling pythons, because you just feel like you're going to drop them. And a lot of the time they do kind of fly out of your hands unexpectedly, because they're just trying to climb from one hand to another. Now you might notice this guy has had a few strikes at me throughout this video. Uh, he has not bitten me as of yet, thankfully. And that is purely because I'm used to handling snakes, and if I don't want to get bit, I'm not going to get bit unless I completely ignore what I'm doing. It's all about reading their body language. I would not get these snakes as a beginner. And this is kind of the purpose of this video, discussing whether or not these guys are or are not beginner snakes. And I have to say they're not beginner snakes. I wouldn't say they're overly advanced either. They're somewhere in the middle. And honestly, it's not just because they're mildly venomous. That actually plays a very small factor into whether or not they're a beginner snake because even though they're mildly venomous, it's not a medically significant venom and they've got a horrible delivery system, rear fangs, very hard for them to actually get them into your skin. As they grow up, they're not that aggressive. It's only when they're young ones like this, they get a bit timid and a little bit striky and nippy. They're just not that fun for beginners because they're a strictly nocturnal snake. They almost never come out during the day, especially when they're younger. Um, they're kind of delicate too, even as they grow up, because they're very thin and lightweight. They're not the sort of snake you want to get out and handle regularly like you would a python. Saying all that, their care is kind of similar to a python's in a lot of ways. Um, they don't need an overly huge enclosure because they're not a very big snake. Something tall with lots of branches is fine. Um, heating wise, you want to give them a similar sort of temperature to most of your Australian pythons. So a hot, a warm spot in the tank of about 30 degrees Celsius is fine. You want to give them obviously lots of climbing branches, a couple of hiding boxes because they do hide during the daytime, especially when they're younger. And they don't require UV lighting, so that's not necessary. I mean, you can pop a light on the tank just so that you can display them nicely, but they don't need it to be a UV light. And just a water bowl that's big enough for them to soak in if they need to shed. They won't eat very big meals compared to most pythons. They're a very slim snake. Their body can't stretch to the capacity a python can with consuming prey. So you want to give them much smaller prey items. Can be a bit finicky to feed when they're younger like this one. I had, a, I had issues getting this guy to eat. He's eating now, but it, it took some um, different approaches to eventually you know, entice him to eat something. It was very difficult for the first couple of weeks, to be honest. So I wouldn't get this as your first snake. However, if you've had snakes for a little while and you just want something that's a little bit different than a python, these are fine. Like if you've been keeping pythons for at least a year or two and you've got your head around that and you want something a little different, these guys are fine. However, if this is, if you're looking for your very first snake and you've never had a snake before ever, I probably wouldn't recommend getting a brown tree snake. Um, most beginners do want to, you know, get something a little bit more friendly and handleable and uh, less delicate, so the, the python's usually the way to go for you guys. 
Now this brown tree snake is an eastern. This is kind of the more common variety that you'll see around. There is another type which, um, as far as I know, it's called a tiger brown tree snake. I'll pop a picture of it up on the screen. They're a little bit rarer in the hobby and a fair bit more expensive. Um, they're ex pretty much the same snake as this. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's just a different color. Uh, I'm not 100% sure where they're from. I'm pretty sure it's just a locality thing, but you'll have to kind of look that one up. I'm not 100% sure on those. Um, regarding like why they have that tiger patterning, if it's due to a locality or it's actually just people breeding them that way, I'm not 100% sure. So I have found with these guys that um, also when it comes to just getting them out of their enclosure, where some of your pythons that are quite tame, you can kind of just reach in and pick them up. Uh, these guys, I would advise using a snake hook at least to get them out of the enclosure because most of the time when they're in their enclosure, they'll be sitting in a position all curled up or something like that where you can't actually put your hands on them without them biting you back. And depending on how tame your brown tree snake is, I guess it can vary, but I would personally just recommend using a hook at least to get them out. Once they're out, you can see they're quite manageable. Once they're on the move like this, aggression or defensiveness, it's not really on their mind. They're just kind of cruising around doing their own thing. Um, they are easily spooked though with handling with fast movements because their eyesight is much better than most pythons as well. So any fast movements, they will react to it much more, much quicker and more swift than a python would. So you do kind of have to be a little careful of that. So overall, I'd say they're not a beginner snake, but if you've been keeping a few snakes for a little while at least, you should be fine to keep these. As long as you take a few precautions, because yeah, they are mildly venomous, but saying that, no one really gets bitten by them and envenomated, and it's not a medically significant venom, so minimal risk as far as anything with fangs and venom goes. Anyways, I'm gonna put this little fella back in his enclosure. I don't wanna keep him out much longer. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. I'll leave my Instagram down below if you want to follow me there. Any questions about brown tree snakes that I haven't covered in this video, you can always let me know down in the comment section. I'll try to answer them as best I can. I'll see you guys next video. Bye-bye.